Hey guys, I'm CMA Supra, and welcome to another Company of Heroes video, and this one's actually a 1v1, just like you guys are used to, and just like I normally play. Last video's 3v3 match was kind of, uh, kind of a, just a one-off thing, because I randomly felt like playing a multiplayer match. So this time it is actually a 1v1, and I actually recorded this game a couple days ago. I was not planning on recording or commentating this video today, um, just because I've been so tired all day. But I actually just had myself a bowl of ice cream. I just wanted some ice cream, and now I feel energized. So uh, I figured, hey, why not go ahead and commentate that video? Because I would like to do it, and I have been meaning to do it for a couple days. I've just been far too tired. And who knows, maybe this video will be absolutely horrible because I'm energized yet tired, and it's kind of a weird combo. Who knows? We'll find out. <laughs> so. I am playing as the Americans, my opponent is playing as the Wehrmacht. I know normally I show the very end of the loading screen at the beginning of these videos. That did not happen this time because I didn't hit the record key in time. It was actually... this match loaded very fast, which was very surprising. But I am playing as the Americans, figured something just to change it up, and we are playing on Angoville, which is kind of an American-biased map. Uh, just like Simwa is more of a Wehrmacht-biased map in the Vanilla Company of Heroes matchup. And you can see I have built a rifle squad out of the barracks, and my second unit is going to be a jeep. Just like I kind of told you guys, like, hey, if it's a nice open map, a jeep is a good second unit to get, because it can drive all around and damage pioneers or whatever you're facing just a little bit and make your riflemen have a little bit of an edge in any fight they come up in. Uh, this kind of a fight, though, engineers versus pioneers and Volksgrenadiers, uh, those engineers are never going to win, so just straight up retreat because you don't want to take unnecessary damage or unnecessary losses. And the entire point of the Jeep is to make your opponent take unnecessary damage and unnecessary losses because anything they do to your Jeep is just going to be repaired, while any damage you do to them is going to cost them manpower, either in terms of buying veterancy to heal up or in terms of buying... Uh, reinforcements for their squads. And that's exactly what I'm doing with my Jeep here. I am just annoying them, harassing them, making them take unnecessary damage. Just like I like to do with the Jeep. So, in case you're wondering why this video is called Angoville Massacre, I'm not going to spoil too much, but uh, let's just say there was a lot of dying involved in this game. And when I say a lot, I really mean a lot. At least for the amount of time that this game lasted, which you already know how long that is because you know how long the video is, so I don't have to tell you. My opponent is actually trying to... He realizes my Jeep is just giving him damage and he can't really do anything about it, so he tried charging my Jeep, which I thought was funny because that is how you make the Jeep back off, but if I'm paying attention to it, I'm just going to keep kiting whatever you're charging with. So it did not work for my opponent. I'm just hurting him. Looked like you tried to lure me there into some Volksgrenadiers, but the Jeep has extra line of sight. I can see what you're doing there, guy. I see what you're doing there. That's not what the meme says. It's, I see what you did there, but that's okay. You trying to Panzerfaust me? Have you already teched up to Tier 2? He kind of looked like he was trying to Panzerfaust me, but I'm not entirely sure there. It'd be a little early if he's already at Tier 2, but it is... I think it is possible. They get 20 fuel just in three and a half minutes. Could be wrong there. Ooh, that rifle squad is in pain. I should retreat it and do as I said I would do, which is not take unnecessary damage. Unless I am trying to support them. And okay, yeah, now they're screwed, so get out of there. That Volkswagen Deer squad almost died, but uh, didn't quite get them. That Pioneer squad is very low on health, though. And I decided not to tell my jeep to focus fire on them, just because I need to get my jeep out of there. And if they're focus firing, they're not going to move. If they're moving, they're not going to focus fire. You either get one or the other. So I figured, hey, getting it out of there is much more important than focus firing that pioneer squad. I would like to save my jeep, because losing a unit this early in the game is just detrimental to the rest of your game. Unless your opponent is just so much worse than you, and you just simply had a bad opening part of the match. A bad early game, that's what it's called. And I think I just started upgrading bars for myself. I always like to go BARs on my riflemen. As the Americans, I 
very rarely go with the M8 because it takes too much effort to send engineers back to the base and build the supply yard, build the uh, the uh, motor pool, that's what it's called. And it's just, it reduces your capping power and I prefer to have the capping power and fighting power on the field instead of back at base and hey, I got lucky there, killed off the Pioneer Squad. Didn't kill off the Volksenadir squad, but oh well. As I was saying, I like to have the capping power and the fighting power on the field, not back at base building. So I pretty much always go BARs. And there's a big tip for you guys, if you ever face me when I'm playing Americans, there's a very, very good chance I'm going to go BARs, and a very small chance I'm going to go with an M8. But you never actually know, because sometimes I do go with an M8 just to change things up or because I deem that it's going to be a better buy for whatever the situation is. Using suppressing fire with the two men on this uh, rifle squad. Those two men are very effective there. Normally two men cannot suppress anything, so I'm guessing one or two of them died in the process. I don't actually know how many people were there, and oh my god, they need to retreat. They have so little health. And here I wanted to see how many CPs it was to let my Jeep be able to cap points, and it's two, so I was like, eh, let me not get Armor Doctrine quite yet. Let me think about it some more, and oh my gosh, that's just a massacre. And so I decide, hey, let me just retreat this other rifle squad. Oh my god, my opponent has built a bunker. Okay. So that's 150 manpower and 50 munitions right there. No fuel, but uh, cost of manpower and munitions. Not entirely sure why he did that, but I guess he just really, really wants to keep his fuel. As you will find out later in this video, he was actually trying to do a quick tech to tier 4. He was trying to do the tier 1 to tier 4 strategy, and in case you guys are not familiar with it, it's a very difficult strategy to pull off unless you go with the Blitzkrieg Doctrine, so you can at least have Stormtroopers uh, with Panzer Shreks or SDG 44s in, in the middle there while you're still teching to tier 4. Because um, it's pretty expensive to get to tier 4. So, it's kind of a risky thing. You have to be really good with your infantry. You should almost always go Blitzkrieg Doctrine if you're going to try and do that strategy. Although some people still choose not to go with that Doctrine. I believe this guy went with Defensive, but I could be wrong about that. Um... We'll see. We'll have to find out, because I'm not... I don't believe he used any abilities from any Doctrine that were, like, really obvious, so... Most likely he went defensive, which is not what you're supposed to do. But, uh, anyways, as I was saying, ooh, that Volk Squad is very low health. Nice push with the Rifle Squad here, and as I was saying, um... He's trying to do a tier 1 to 4 strategy, and we'll just have to see how that works out for him. But that does explain why he built the bunker, the MG bunker, on the left side there with the fuel. Now the astute among you may have looked at the minimap and realized that I'm cut off from pretty much every single point on the map. My opponent is doing a very good job capping the map. And I do give him credit for that, but he kind of overextended here, because you can see I'm just capturing the map back now, and he's completely pushed off the map, so I have free reign to capture, and I believe I also have more units to capture with, because I never, I never built an MG bunker or anything that costs half a manpower. Um, not half a manpower. Half a unit, I guess, in manpower. Because it's 150 manpower, which is like half a unit, because a normal unit's like 280. Half of that is 140. A normal unit being a Volksfinadier squad, by the way. Oh my god, huge amount of infantry coming. Decap that point, Rifleman, and then get the heck out of there. Did I tell them to retreat? Yeah, I told them to retreat. They're running fast. Got flamethrowers, Volksfinadiers, including Volksfinadiers that are not fully uh, remanned. Reinforced. Wonder if he just didn't have enough uh, pop cap for it. Grenade! Ooh, killed two guys. Pretty good. I also got BARs. I'm in close range, but I cannot win once those flamers and extra Volks and Deer show up there. I thought I was going to win that fight until they showed up, and hey, I guess I killed the Volks and Deer squad over here. And it looks like it was the low health one that he left over there to cap the point. That was purely accidental on my part. I did not actually mean to kill the squad, but. I will take it. I don't know anyone who wouldn't take it. Uh, decap the point and run away before you take too many losses, especially to that flamethrower. And especially because you are Vet 1. I do have Vet 1 on that rifle squad. 
not used to veterans see coming so fast, but I guess it does. Whenever I watch someone else playing Company of Heroes 2, because I'm still trying kind of to get back into Company of Heroes 2 by watching other videos before I get back into playing it, I'm always amazed at how fast the squads get veterancy, but maybe that was also the case in Company of Heroes 1, and I just don't remember very well. But then again, I only have one unit with veterancy. I feel like at this point in Company of Heroes 2, you'd have like two Vet 2 units by now, which is nuts. Oh, I do have two Vet 1 units. But uh, veterancy is done differently in Company of Heroes 2. You earn it just by fighting, not by killing. And so I feel like they earn veterancy faster, but I could be wrong. And oh my god, opponent, what the heck are you doing? Surely you're not a noob like that. Surely you are not. The answer is he's not. He's actually pretty decent. At least I think I'm decent and he's about my skill level, so I think he's decent. Uh, I can't say, any, say anything else other than that to judge him, because that's all I know. I've never actually played this guy before except for this one game. So uh, he seemed to be decent other than that one move where he had like four or five squads all capturing the same point. Made me really wish I had artillery. It made me really wish that he was not looking at them capture the point so that I could just throw the artillery down, wipe out all those squads, and then I win just like that. Because that would be awesome. Now you'll notice that he is capturing the right side of the map while I do have the left side of the map being capped. Um, I'm using my jeep to capture it, and I did go armor doctrine with that two CP uh, light vehicles can now capture territory ability, whatever it's called. I don't have a clue what it's called. Uh, all I know is the announcer says light vehicles can now capture territory. And it's like, yay, they're gonna cap slow, but they can cap. And I've been panzer fausted by that. Uh, Volksgrenadier squad, I'm trying to repair the jeep, but there's another Volksgrenadier squad coming. Can I kill it before they Panzerfaust my jeep? No, I cannot, but the opponent did actually take heavy losses there, and I managed to cap the point, so it wasn't too bad to lose the jeep. The jeep was also starting to become somewhat ineffective, and if you look at how much manpower I'm floating, as well as my fuel, you'll see I didn't really need that jeep. If I really want another jeep, I can just buy another jeep. Granted, it's not going to have whatever veterancy, uh, I guess, whatever kills that one had towards its veterancy. But I don't know that it had any kills, period. So, whatever. You also may have seen me trying to uh, roast the jeep carcass there, because I didn't want my opponent to get uh, munitions out of it. But I believe it's only like 10 or 15 munitions you get out of there, so I figured, whatever. It's going down way too slowly, I'm not going to bother destroying it. So I just sent them over there to destroy the... Uh, the MG bunker on the left protecting the fuel there. Hey, that one on another rifle squad. And can I kill that other Volksgrenadier squad that's at the victory point? It doesn't look like he's retreating him on the minimap, so I might be able to. This squad needs to retreat. I do kill the Volksgrenadier squad there at the victory point. I make my opponent retreat in the middle. I won... Oh, no. He has units in the building. Let's throw a grenade. Does he notice? He does not notice. There goes the Volk squad. And that Flamethrower Pioneer squad is so doomed because I have so many units on its retreat path that it would have no chance of surviving if it retreated. So, uh... I won two fights, lost one, but in the end, I didn't actually lose very much manpower, if any, in that one fight that I lost, while my opponent just lost, what, one, two, three squads? It was two Volks and Endear squads and one Pioneer squad. So, uh, that was definitely a huge win for me. And I'm also floating still almost 900 manpower. Be nice if I did something with it. Oh yeah, I remember why I, I, remember why I was floating this much manpower. is because I'm at 81 fuel and I was wanting to build tier 4. I figured, hey, this guy hasn't appeared to do anything other than tier 1. Maybe he's doing tier 1 to tier 4, and I'm going to do tier 1 to tier 4 at the same time. Let's try this out and see how it goes. Um, so I was waiting on the fuel to do anything, and I didn't want to keep building more rifle squads, because they do really drain your manpower income if you have a whole bunch of them. So I figured I have nothing to spend my manpower on, I'm just waiting for the fuel here. You might notice that my opponent does have both of the fuel points though, so going tier 4 was probably not the smartest thing I could have done. But it's still what my goal was, just to 
I guess just to try it out while my opponent tries to do the same thing. Same thing. I think I said that weird. Looking at victory points, uh, I have one, he has one, I am capturing a second one for myself, so his victory points will be counting down soon. Um, in terms of totals, I am definitely doing better, 450 versus 387, but it's not a huge advantage, especially for this part of the game, we're only 15 minutes in. Almost lost my jeep there to a Panzerfaust, though. That one did a whole lot more damage than I expected it to do. It did survive, though. Yeah, ooh! Folks in a deer squad, can I kill it? Can I kill it? Can I kill it? Oh, it, I failed. Alright, capture the fuel point, then repair the jeep, because it needs repairs, but I want to capture the fuel point before you repair the jeep. Can I get in the retreat path of these Volksrenadier squads and then uh, kill them off as they retreat? I possibly can. That's what I'm trying to do here. Chase them off there and then use my other squad once uh, the Volksrenadier squads actually reach the squad to finish them off, hopefully. Or not. Apparently I'm just going to capture the point. May or may not have been the smartest idea, who knows. But if I do capture the point, I am reducing my opponent's population cap, so maybe he won't be able to reinforce those squads. That's entirely a possibility, because the only thing connected to his base is a single plus five fuel point, and that gives him very little pop cap. I don't know what the actual number is, but uh, it's very low. That's all I know. Hey, you guys are not capturing. I hate when that happens. I don't know why it happens. I assume it's because of the way you click the point, but I don't know why it happens, if it's because of the game or if it's just the way that we click the point determines whether they actually cap it. Now there is a huge mob, huge red mob, coming towards my jeep on the right side there, and so I decide, hey, stop the repairing, just take the jeep, run away, and then I see an Ostwind on the left side, and I'm just like, oh great, I am not prepared for this. I could really use the Airborne Doctrine here, so I could call in an AT gun, because I don't actually have the motor pool. And I have no form of AT whatsoever here, so I don't quite know what to do. I just wish I would have gone Airborne Doctrine now. So I considered building the motor pool, and then I'm like, no, I really wanted to go Tier 4. Make it Tier 4 versus Tier 4. Um... Rather, Tier 1 to Tier 4 strategy versus Tier 1 to Tier 4 strategy. See who does it better, the Americans or the Wehrmacht. I can tell you, Americans hardly ever do the strategy. You'll see Wehrmacht do it a whole lot more. But I just wanted to do it anyways. So, I'm now building a tank depot. You might notice I don't have much fuel income. My opponent is capturing the high fuel point that I do have. And he has now actually decapped it, so my fuel income is only plus 10, and I only have 26 fuel. Now think about what I can afford from the tank depot with that little fuel income and that little fuel to start with. The answer is nothing. At all. <laughs> nothing at all. I might be able to get an M10 in about 3 minutes, but you know how much damage that Ostwin is going to do in 3 minutes? The past me who was actually playing this game did not know that. He was not thinking very clearly. He just really wanted to build tier 4. You can even see me looking at the M10 there like, oh, I know it's 55 fuel, how quickly can I get that 55 fuel? And I'm just really hoping to get it soon. In reality, it's going to take another couple minutes. So, uh, that's not good for me. <laughs> oh... Really should have built a motor pool, or really should have gone airborne doctrine. Either one of those would have worked. But instead I built a tank depot that's not gonna get used against this Ostwin because I can't afford anything. And yet I'm still trying. Trying hard. Ooh, watch this grenade throw. Best grenade throw 2016. I click on the house, they throw it through the house. They throw it so hard it just goes through all the windows and doors and walls inside the house. And it just, it goes to the complete other end of the house. It's just the best grenade throw 2016, period. Just amazing. On the bright side, I still killed the Volksrendier squad, so I guess not really much harm was done there. Maybe I lost an extra rifle man. 
out of that because the grenade didn't go off like it was supposed to inside the house. Uh-oh, these engineers are doomed. And look at how slowly the health on that bunker is going down. You can... You can see it... I, I'm not entirely sure how fast it should go down, but that seemed really slow, so that's why I think my opponent went defensive. Especially because I never saw a V1 or a King Tiger or anything like that from my opponent. So I can only assume he went... Uh, defensive. Never saw a Tiger, Stu... Uh, set of the unit stormtroopers from Blitz. Never saw any of those, so I can only assume he went defensive. That's just the only thing I can assume. So, here you can see me kind of just give up. Like, yeah, do I really want to build an M10 against the against the Ostwind? You can see how pushed back I am. I could really stand to use the fuel that I have toward a motor pool. So I can just build AT guns with manpower and not need fuel income, because I have very little fuel income. I don't want to build an M10, and then it dies, and then I have no fuel to build a motor pool or do anything. And I have no way to get AT, because then I'd be screwed. So even though I had the fuel to build one M10, and that's it, I decided to build the motor pool just because it was the safer bet, even though I did wait the three minutes to get the fuel um, for the M10. I ended up not spending it on the M10, but instead a motor pool. Look at these sticky bombs. Oh, so effective. And once they're thrown, I really need to retreat, as I think I'm about to do. Yeah, there we go. And Ostwind is down. That is a huge help. I mean, it, it costs my opponent 410 manpower and, like, 40 fuel, I believe. I believe it's 40, because it's half the Panzer IV and the Panzer IV is 80. I believe that's right. I don't build tier 4 very often as the Wehrmacht, and it's been a while since I've even built tier 4 period as the Wehrmacht. Just because I haven't been playing this game too much lately, but I believe those numbers are right. So it's costing him more manpower than fuel, which is fine because he does actually have most of the map, as you can see. <laughs> I'm sure he has a very good fuel income right now, so that 40 fuel is not hurting him at all. It's only the manpower that's going to be hurting, because that's the rarest resource in the game. No real way to increase it without just capturing points. You get plus three per point that you capture. So, doesn't really change throughout the game. Unless you have a ton of units as the Americans, because they have such high upkeep that your manpower income dips to 227 with this many units. It's actually very little manpower income. That's a nice uh, charge by me. Didn't do very much other than uh, force my opponent off the field, which is not entirely my goal, but at the same time I was kind of was wanting to get an Ostwin to come chase me over here, because I just finished building an AT gun, and I want that AT gun to kill an Ostwind, along with sticky bombs and mines that I am now placing. You might also notice I am at pop cap, so I was kind of just forced into trying to push my opponent off the field and get some points under my control. Decided to go for the left side where my opponent had some infantry in hopes of killing him. Didn't actually kill them. Need more pop cap. I'm at, uh, I'm at 30, so maybe it is 30 when you don't have any points, and then after that every point increases it more. I don't know by how much, but... Hey, building a second AT gun, too. <sighs> Yummy water. <laughs> so, captured a decent amount on the left side there. One, two, three, four points for 13 extra pop cap. I'm not entirely sure how that math works, because 13 is a prime number. But whatever. We'll accept it as it is. Ooh, my opponent used Force Retreat. Okay, he did not go defensive. He went Terror. So, uh, maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe he did have a King Tiger and I forgot? I don't think he did, though. My AT gun's dead, which is not good. Wasn't I building another AT gun? Where is that thing? Did I cancel it, or what? Where did the other AT gun go? 
I don't know. That's, but it's up to this one rifle squad to sticky bomb both Austrians and kill them. And the flamethrower engineer squad needs to roast the three Vulcan engineer squads. They're one man each on very, very low health. At least one squad died, maybe two. That one gets away. And ooh, that Austwin. Uh, that Austwin blew up without a sticky bomb. So I guess rifles. Riflemen with their BARs, if they can penetrate Austwin armor. I guess there's the possibility of that. I do know the way this game works is every bullet you fire has a certain amount of penetration associated with it. And that's why you can. In very, very, very rare circumstances, see uh, a jeep kill a king tiger. I think there's a video on YouTube of that happening, if I'm not mistaken. I could be entirely mistaken. Maybe I'm thinking one of my old videos where the, was, it wasn't the jeep killing the king tiger, but instead the jeep was just having fun with the king tiger, circling around it, and the king, and the king tiger couldn't do anything to it. I don't remember. I'm trying to remember. I don't remember. But... I know every bullet has a chance of penetrating armor, so the rifleman could penetrate the Ostwin, and let's just leave it at that, rather than making things up and being wrong. Begin armored operations. So I do have a Calliope on the field, or a Calliope as I used to call it, because that's what I honestly thought it was called for the longest time. <laughs> but it's a Calliope. I do have one on the field. I did use a barrage on my opponent's cutoff point on the left, but it did nothing. And now I'm going to barrage this bunker, maybe. I was hoping to get the Ostwind in it. And uh, the goal with the Calliope was to kill any Ostwinds my opponent has, along with using AT guns and sticky bombs, obviously. But uh, I couldn't get the Super Pershing because I was going down the right side of the Armor Doctrine and I didn't want to switch to the left, just like, just like that, because then it would take even longer before I'd get a tank from the Doctrine. So I figured... Let me just get a Calliope, maybe it'll kill an Ostwind or two, maybe it'll kill some infantry, maybe it'll kill some bunkers. Let's just get it and see what happens. So, I got it. Oh my god, my opponent has another bunker on the right side. And this is really why I thought he went defensive, because like, he's built two bunkers now. One on each field point. Generally, you only build multiple bunkers if you're going defensive doctrine. Not always the case, but generally you do because they do have increased health and you can reinforce from them, which you cannot do normally. Hey, that's a Vet 3 rifle squad. It better survive that. Oh good, there we go. And my AT gun revealed itself, so my opponent is not falling for going for the AT gun. Um, or going chasing after the rifle squad as much as I wanted them to. And now I am sending the AT gun to go and uh, destroy that MG bunker on the left side. I'm hoping it'll destroy it. My flamers have been unsuccessful after multiple attempts. So maybe this AT gun will be successful. We will just have to wait and find out. In other news, I am burning up in my room. It says it's 77 degrees, which was just fine, like, half an hour ago before I started recording this. Now I'm burning up at 77 degrees. I do not understand my body. Ooh, that bunker's going down. It's at very low health. Apparently my opponent has not been repairing it. And now it's dead. It appears he also has Vet 1 on his Ostwind. So I guess that's, what, tanks? Tanks or light vehicles? I forget where the Ostwind is. In terms of veterancy. At the Kampkraft Center. I do not know. Why do I have a squad retreating on the left side? on the minimap. What squad is retreating? It sounded like they were firing BARs. Why did I retreat a full health Vet 3 squad? That had to be a mistake. There's no way I did that on purpose. Because they were attacking some squad on the left side, some enemy squad. But Oh my god, that's a Vet 3 squad. Throw the sticky, retreat. Are you gonna survive? I hope you'll survive. Ooh, can I kill the Ostwind? Can I kill the Ostwin? Nope, didn't kill the Ostwin, but I killed something else right there. You see the plus three XPs? Looks like a Pioneer Squad. So that's pretty good. So uh, you can kind of see why I called this video Angoville Massacre. Because there have just been so many deaths on both sides of this match. I've been losing lots of men, my opponent has been losing lots of men, just so many men dying. It seems unusually high for uh, 
for a match on this map. Ooh, can I roast them to death? Got one guy. Can I kill the last one? Nope, last one gets away. Well, at least I cost my man my opponent 28 manpower. Hello, Ostwind. I am going to kill you with my AT gun and Sticky Bomb. Sticky Bomb, so you can't run away from the AT gun, hopefully. AT gun just needs to actually hit you, which I think requires refacing it. Oh no, my screen went black. <laughs> there we go. Forgot to move the mouse. Fifty-seven mil at your service. Running away, although they did kill the Ostwin, they got credit for the light vehicle kill. Or the tank kill, I'm not sure which one, but uh... No, that was a tank kill, so... Yeah, counts as a tank, and I assume it's the same as veteran, for veterancy then. But who really knows. Anyways, AT gun got the kill, I do have two AT guns, I also built an M10 when I finally got some fuel income, which I have now lost. My opponent has taken it back, but I did have it at one point, so I got myself an M10 just to deal with the Ostwinds and potentially any other tank my opponent comes out with. And now it is up to me to try and make a comeback here, because now I finally have a way to deal with the Ostwinds. I've killed two of them. First one died to a whole bunch of sticky bombs. Second one died to a sticky bomb and a T-gun shot. That Grenadier squad has two Panzer Shreks, I believe. Maybe just one. But they have Panzer Shreks, so my opponent is expecting me to have a tank. I don't believe he has seen me with any tanks yet, other than the Calliope. So maybe he just built it to counter the Calliope, but I don't know. In my opinion, he's expecting me to have tanks. But I could be entirely wrong about that. I was trying to flank around the... Uh, MG bunker there on the right side with this flamethrower pioneer squad, but then I realized no, it's just angled so well that it's going to be very difficult to flank around it, so I decided to just place some mines instead. Call it good. And now I go up to the bunker just to kind of see how it's oriented, and it's it's just too good. Such a good orientation right there, too hard for me to flank around it. So I kind of just gave up. I can at least capture the fuel on the left side. Hello there, Grenadier Squad. You do have two Panzer Shreks, okay, I was right. Oh my god, this squad's dying. I also lost another squad somewhere else, I don't know where. But can this squad get out alive? Nope, they do not. Lost an Engineer Squad, I believe I also lost a Rifle Squad on the right side, so that's not good. I use a Calliope Barrage, I'm thinking, where would my opponent be going with this whole blob of stuff? And I assume he's gonna go right there? We may or may not be right. Turns out we are wrong. Not a single plus anything XP, not a single unit showed up, that means he had absolutely nothing in that area. So that was just kind of a waste of a barrage. A calliope barrage. And if you look at the top of the screen there, you'll see I have 42 victory points left when my opponent has 311. That's an issue. So, uh, yeah, that's an issue. I need to work on those victory points. My opponent did decide to attack me here on the left side. I had a mine ready for him, and then after he ran over the mine, I had an M10 and an AT gun waiting on him. So the Ostwind is now dead, the Pioneer Squad is now dead, I'm not sure why it didn't retreat, but it didn't. Maybe my opponent was busy doing something else when he realized, oh my god, he's prepared for me. I was not expecting him to be prepared for me, or something like that. Using Suppressing Fire on the Rifle Squad, and I figure, hey, let me throw a grenade at these guys now, that's why I decided to use Suppressing Fire, just to get him to stop moving. But then he retreats, and I'm like, okay, cancel the grenade, that's okay. Let me go ahead and start working on getting victory points on the right side here. I do have half the left side captured back, a little more than half, I guess. And hey, you're trying to build another bunker. No building bunkers, guy. Just like there should be no monkeys jumping on the bed. I don't know why, but that's been stuck in my head for so long now. Like, weeks. Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. You guys know that song? Did I just get it stuck in your head now? <laughs> uh, 
I don't know why, but it's been stuck in my head for weeks now. Barraging the bunker here. Like it looked like a grand total of zero of those rockets actually even hit the bunker, so... I probably didn't do much damage, if any damage, to that thing. That's the risk with the barrage. You don't actually know what you're gonna hit. So now I have captured two of the VPs. One on the left, one on the right. And so my opponent's VPs are taking down instead of mine. So that's a good thing. I do only have 25 left, but perhaps I can make a comeback here. I do have this Vite 3 rifle squad. I actually had quite a few this game. And I do have AT guns to deal with the Ostwinds. And uh, my opponent does not seem to have vet on his infantry, so my infantry should beat his infantry, especially because they have BARs. I'm gonna sticky this Ostwind while the AT gun fails to kill it. Maybe the sticky will work. It does work, awesome. AT gun went down, but that's okay. I did so much damage to my opponent. And my opponent dropped a Panzer Shrek, which is the danger of putting two guns or two Panzer Shreks on a single Grenadier squad. Because if they drop down too low in min, there's a good chance they'll drop one of their Panzer Shreks or whatever they're carrying. I believe too low in min is one man. Because if they only have two men, then they'll still carry both of the guns. I believe that's correct. I could be wrong about that. Who knows? Man, look at how much manpower I have. 1,000 manpower. Not many munitions, not much fuel, but I got tons of manpower. Manpower for days. That bunker is still over here positioned very well, but uh, I just got myself a Sherman Crocodile, which is the flamethrower Sherman, and that thing is going to be invincible to a bunker. Unless my opponent builds a Goliath and uses it to destroy my Sherman, which is entirely a possibility, and reminds me that I wanted to make a video where I play as the Wehrmacht and use units that are never used, like the Nebelwerfer, the Officer, the Goliath, um... There's probably other units that are never used. <laughs> Can't think of them off the top of my head, but at least those three are never used in the Wehrmacht faction. Every other faction seems to have a whole bunch of units that at least are used, but... Eh, I don't know. Those three are just very rarely used as the Wehrmacht. So I kind of wanted to make a video where I actually use those three units. At least the Officer and Goliath, because... The Nebelwerfer, at least, is somewhat useful. I guess even the Officer and Goliath are useful, but they're not as useful. Goliath is more of a fun kind of useful. <laughs> oh, Crocodile, would you hurry up and roast this Panzer Shrek squad? I finally decided, okay, this thing's gonna die if I don't just move it to try and run him over. And I actually do manage to run over one and set the other one on fire, so my opponent has just lost a Pioneer Squad and a Grenadier Squad with the Panzer Shrek. And that is where he rage quits, because I believe I also killed a Pioneer Squad by that bottom right v VP. I could be wrong, but I believe I did. Uh, M10, I believe that killed a uh, Ostwind, so it was not useless this game. The uh, Calliope, I don't know if it did very much. I guess it at least intimidated the opponent into buying Panzer Shreks, if nothing else. That's useful, right? Because it reduces his anti-infantry capabilities. So, uh, yeah. I guess every unit I bought, every tank I bought, actually had a use, which is not what I would have expected in this game, because I hardly bought any <laughs> and didn't really use any of them. But as you can see, my opponent did not have very much left. I guess I was just hurting his manpower too badly. I'm floating 1,400 manpower, so I, I definitely had enough manpower to buy even more units if I wanted to. I just would have to be buying riflemen and AT guns and other things that cost nothing but manpower, and I didn't want to buy them, so I was kind of limited in how much manpower I could spend because I didn't have enough fuel. But... Uh, Despite all that, I did a huge drain on my opponent's manpower, and uh, that's why this is an Angoville Massacre. Beginning of the game, or rather the middle of the game, I was losing tons of units to that Ostwind. And uh, end of the game, I finally made a comeback after being pushed to the, all the way back into my base. 
My opponent did as well, because I pushed him all the way back into his base, and he still managed to come back out of that. But, uh, I made a comeback, and drained his manpower to the point that he could not win. So I hope you all have enjoyed this Company of Heroes video, and I will hopefully see you all in the next one. Bye, guys. Thank you.